All right, welcome back. So, um, last class we were talking about the uh, the uh, different types of economy, right? And uh, by the decision-making process, we could uh, talk about centrally planned economy versus market economy, right? And uh, depending on the, uh, the the ownership of resources, we could distinguish between capitalism and socialism, okay? All right, so today I'm going to start out with a couple of uh, the uh, classical, um, classic classic um, source of the uh, the this theory supporting these different uh, 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 economic systems. Okay? Capitalism, for example, right? Uh, the uh, the most famous uh, the theoretical background comes from this Adam Smith's book. Okay? an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. Okay? Uh, that's the full title, but uh, typically we just call it wealth of nations. Okay? So in economics, if you call it, if you say wealth of nations, everybody knows, uh, you know, you're talking about this book. Okay? It's a very famous book uh, written about 250 years ago. Yeah? Uh, that book is not really easy to read. <laughs> If you try to read this book, you'll find out that uh, it's written in Old English. Yeah? Uh, it's not really, uh, you know, very easy to read and understand. Yeah? But don't worry, I'll give you the gist of this book today. Yeah? Uh, the, um, about 250 years ago when uh, Adam Smith wrote this book, this book was not very well received. Yeah? And if you uh, read this, uh, uh, the paragraph here, it says a free exchange motivated by self-interest is actually very socially productive uh, and so on. And uh, if regulations and government in interventions are lifted, individual self-interest will be harnessed, by, harnessed and directed by the invisible hand of competitive market prices. So basically, what he's talking about here is the idea of free market, right? Instead of government getting into the, uh, the economy and trying to uh, control the economy or plan the economy, uh, what he's suggesting is just leave them alone, right? Let everybody do whatever they want, right? Then, uh, you know, they're going to try to use themselves in the area where they perform the best, right? If you are good in making, um, say, dresses, right, then uh, you're going to become a tailor because obviously you can make more money that way, right? If you are good in music, for example, right, then perhaps you'll become a singer or composer or, you know, because you will be more successful, right? And that way, uh, the, the total output of the society will be the largest, right? That's what his suggesting, right? So to, uh, uh, to us living in today's world, okay, this is not really uh, what, you know, different or, you know, this is completely, uh, you know, new idea, right? But uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, Adam Smith's time in, in Scotland or in England, right, people had completely different idea about the economy or, or the wealth of nation, right? So uh, uh, at that time, people thought, you know, how do we measure the wealth of a nation? In other words, how do we know whether a country is rich or poor, right? How should it be uh, measured, right? Uh, they thought the, the wealth of nation could be measured by the amount of gold and silver accumulated in the king's treasury, king or monarch, you know, the leader of the country, right? Because, you know, at that time, when a country goes to a war against another country, right, uh, who's going to finance that war? Who's going to provide all the arms and, uh, you know, food for the soldiers and, and so on, right? Obviously, at that time, the king eh, or the monarch had to provide all that, uh, you know, the, the supplies eh? and uh, you know finance the war right 
So uh, uh, the most important thing at that time was the amount of uh, you know, precious metal like gold or silver right? or other things that could uh, be used you know, to finance the war. Right? And uh, that obviously had to be owned by king right? or the monarch. Right? So the result of that thinking was uh, three. The first one was the exports were encouraged imports were discouraged because at that time uh, when you export something to other country right, when you sell something to other country uh, you get paid in gold or silver, right? Uh, these days, you get paid in probably U.S. dollar, right? Because there's a, you know, U.S. dollar is an international standard currency, right? But at that time, obviously, there was no international standard currency, so usually uh, all the trades were settled in gold or silver or any other, you know, goods like oil probably or whatever can be used okay? so uh, when you export you receive gold and silver which makes the country wealthier right according to that standard right uh, when you import in other words when you buy something from other country you have to pay them in gold right so that would deplete the amount of gold uh, hoarded in the country, right? So in other words, the import will make the country poorer, right? right? Or less wealthier, right? So that's why the encouraged and discouraged. Right? Uh, second thinking was the, the result was the uh, monopolies and the guild association Encouraged and protected, and protected. These days, we think monopoly is bad, right? Uh, we think uh, competition increases the wealth and the welfare in the in the economy, right? And monopoly actually reduces the welfare. Uh, in the economy. You'll learn all about this later, right? Later in this course or perhaps in the future economics principles course, right? So every country uh, these days, uh, they use a lot of money actually to, to break up monopolies, right? To prevent monopolies, right? Um, but at this time, during this, you know, the Adam Smith period, period right? Monopolies were actually protected and encouraged yeah? because when an industry is monopolized, it is very easy to collect taxes. Think about it, right? Suppose all the electronics were produced by one company, Samsung Electronics, that was it, right? Then, uh, you know, government knows, I mean, they can go after only Samsung yeah? and uh, collect taxes because they know exactly, they can find out very easily, you know, how much money Samsung made, right? As opposed to the case where the industry is uh, 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 run by many, many small businesses, right? Then it would be a headache to go after these small companies and try to collect taxes, right? So again, here uh, at this time, the, uh, in order to increase the wealth of nation, the government or the, uh, the, the, the king, the monarch, had to be, you know, wealthier, right? So the, the collecting taxes was very important, right? Um, finally, um, any economic activities motivated by
self gain is considered antisocial. So you were supposed to work for the government, for the uh, the country, not for yourself, right? So you try to increase the wealth of the the nation, country, rather than try to, you know, make yourself richer, right? Because obviously, under these uh, circumstances, there could be some conflict. Whatever you try to uh, 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 make yourself um, rich, right? Could go against the government, against the country, right? So these were uh, these were the the, the, the typical thinking, the typical sentiment at that time, right? And in this background, the uh, what uh, Adam Smith says here was quite different. It was revolutionary idea at that time, right? So that's why the, this book was not very well received in the initially, right? So conclusion of Adam Smith was this, the wealth of nation does not lie in gold and silver, but rather is determined by the goods and services, whether produced at home or abroad, available to the people. Yeah? So what he's saying is, the, the, uh, how do you know whether a country is uh, wealthy or poor, right? That depends on how much goods and services are available to public, right? And it doesn't matter whether, whether it is imported, right? Even if you have to import some things, right? You have to make uh, more things available to people, right? And that's how you increase the wealth of a nation, right? That's the idea, yeah? Understand? Make sense? So you have to understand the uh, the background to see how uh, important his idea was at that time. Yeah. All right, here's uh, the other side. In this book, Das Kapital, by Karl Marx. Uh, we believe that's the this is the the, the most important uh, uh, the theoretical. The uh, support for the uh, socialism. Okay. The, um, well, the English translation is "Capital: A Critique of Political Economy," yeah. and uh, I guess it's written about 50 years. Yeah. 1776, 18 almost 100 years after the uh, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Okay? Um, Marx s argues in this book that the, uh, the workers are exploited by capitalists. Right? Capitalists are the people who own the resources, okay? like land or factory. Right? Yeah, those people are called the capitalists. And the uh, working class, uh, uh, you know, the people, well, the proletaria, proletaria. Actually, the original word comes from French, okay? uh, but this uh, refers to the people in the working class. Yeah? So what uh, Marx says is um, the owners of the businesses, pay the workers only the minimum necessary wage right, to maintain the workforce. Right? But the contribution of worker is actually much greater than that the amount paid by the, uh, the capitalists. Right? So that's the idea of surplus value. Right? And this surplus value creates profits, right? profits for the, uh, the owner of the resources. Right? But because of this uh, uh, structure, right, ultimately there will be a conflict or struggle between classes, the, the, the owner capitalist class and the workers working class. Right? 
So eventually, that, uh, that struggle will make the, the, the economy and society unstable. Okay? And eventually, the uh, working class, proletaria, will win. Okay? And they're going to have the uh, political and economic power right? in the society. Right? That's the uh, prediction of this uh, Marx book, Das Kapital. Right? Well, uh, so this um, provided some ideological underpinning for the uh, uh, October Revolution. Have you ever thought of, heard of October Revolution? Yeah? What are we talking about? Which country? Never heard of October Revolution? Have you seen the movie Red October? Hunt for Red October? No? <laughs> wow. You can't I mean, miss that movie. That, uh, the, my favorite, you know, Sean Connery and uh, what, Alec Baldwin. Nobody? Nobody has seen that movie? Well, make sure you see that. Eh? The Red October is the name for the uh, submarine eh? in that movie. And uh, I think it's based on the real story, right? So obviously there was a, a very, uh, you know, modern, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the new um, submarine made by Soviet Union, I guess, so before it became uh, Russia, right? And anyway, so that's uh, based on that uh, summary. Yeah? Uh, make sure you watch that. <laughs> uh, so Red October uh, is referring to October 1917. In 1917, uh, there was a revolution in Russia, right? And until that time, the Russia was under monarchs, monarchy, Tsar, right? right? But uh, through the revolution, uh, what the, uh, the the Soviet Union is created, right? Soviet Republic, right? Mm -hmm. So they turned the uh, monarchy into the uh, Republic of Workers, working class, right? And uh, the uh, the ideological background came from this uh, Das Kapital. And also, uh, there was another book by Karl Marx, it's a communist manifesto. Communist manifesto, okay? So uh, these two works by Karl Marx provided the, the uh, background for this uh, Soviet Union, birth of Soviet Union, okay? And of course, North Korea, okay? It's based on that idea too, right? All right. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the, uh, the about the socialism. Okay? Yeah, the, uh. All right. Here's another important uh, economic uh, landmark or the theory. Okay? And this is the last key concept in Chapter Two. Right? Uh, okay. The uh, David Ricardo. So I think David Ricardo is about 50 years after Adam Smith. Eh? Adam Smith, David Ricardo, and up about 50 years after we, David Ricardo, there was uh, Karl Marx, right? So there's the history of uh, the, uh, economic thinking, right? Uh, the most important contribution of David Ricardo is in the idea of the uh, comparative advantage. Eh? The, um, and this comparative advantage provides the uh, theory for the, uh, the international trade these days. Yeah? Yeah. So how the international trade should be uh, uh, performed, right? Which country should, pro should uh, produce what, right? And how the, uh, the trade should be made, something like that, right? 
Let's start out with a very simple example. Suppose um, there are two people, Tom and Judy, yeah? and they both work uh, on farm or orchard, right? And let's say Tom, if he spends 10 hours, he can pick either 20 pounds of apple or 20 pounds of cherries. Right? So he is uh, equally adaptive. In other words, uh, whether he picks apple or picks cherry, right? he can do um, e exactly the same amount of production. Right? Judy, perhaps she is more experienced. Okay? So uh, uh, when she spends 10 hours in the field, she can pick either 30 pounds of apples or 60 pounds of cherries. Looks like she has more experience in picking cherries, right? She's a lot better in picking cherries, right? So here we can think about the, uh, the opportunity cost. Yeah? In other words, if Tom wants to produce one pound of apple, right? What does, she, what does he have to give up? Well, think about it. I mean, he can, he can put, pick uh, 20 pounds of apple in 10 hours. So each hour, every hour, he can pick two pounds of apple or two pounds of cherry, right? So if he wants to produce one pound of apple, what does he have to give, give up? No. If he wants to produce one pound of apple, right? What does he have to give up? One pound of cherry, right? So the opportunity cost of apple for Tom is one pound of cherries. Uh, the opportunity cost of cherries, if Tom wants to produce cherry, right? Then what does he have to give up? Well, he has to give up one pound of apple. Right? So whether he does apple or cherry, the, uh, the opportunity costs are the same. Right? On the other hand, uh, if Judy wants to produce one pound of apple, she has to give up two pounds of cherry. Right? Because uh, you know, she is twice as produ productive in producing cherries than in apples. Right? So in one hour, she can either produce three pounds of apples or six pounds of cherries, right? So if Judy, Judy wants to produce apple, one pound, I mean, uh, yeah, one pound of apple, she has to give up two pounds of cherries, right? So opportunity cost of apple for Judy is two pounds of cherry, right? Or if uh, Judy, Judy wants to produce cherry, the opportunity cost of cherry is only half pound of apple, right? Okay, good. So based on this, what we can say is this here. Judy has an absolute advantage in both apples and cherries, right? Compared to Tom, right? Whatever Judy does, she does better, right? She is better, right? in both apple and cherry. So we call that absolute advantage, right? Judy has absolute advantage in both goods, right? However, uh, Tom has comparative advantage in apple. Why? How do we know? Why do we say that? Tom has comparative advantage in apple. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Tom's opportunity cost for apple is lower, right? Eh? Tom has lower opportunity cost in apple compared to Judy, right? Right? Judy's uh, opportunity cost for apple were two cherries, right? But Tom's opportunity cost was only one cherry, right? So in pr to produce one pound of apple. Tom has to give up only one pound of cherry, while Judy has to give up two pounds of cherry. Okay? 
So Tom has advantage, uh, competitive advantage in Apple, which means Judy has competitive advantage in cherries, right? Opportunity cost for producing cherry was only one half apple for Judy, right? While Tom has to give up entire one apple, right? To produce one pound of cherry, right? All right. So um, the, um, the, 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 the definition or the, uh, the, 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 the contribution of the uh, comparative, uh, the, well, David Ricardo regarding uh, the, the, the story of the international trade is this. Even when a country has an absolute advantage in the production of both goods, the country stands to gain by specializing in the production of a, uh, of a uh, good in which it has a comparative advantage and trading. Right? So by specializing and trading, the uh, country can gain, even if the country has absolute advantage. Right? So, Country like the United States, let's think about it. Yeah? U.S. has a, a, a vast amount of land and natural resources, right? Uh, there's almost nothing that the country doesn't have. I mean, it has oil, right? It has, you know, a lot of oil buried underground uh, in Texas or under the Rocky Mountain. You know, there's huge amount of oil, right? Yeah, still, right? undeveloped, right? Uh, of course, there's a huge land for agriculture, right? I mean, if you travel in the United States, uh, drive on the uh, interstate highway, right? Mostly on the sides of interstate highways, what do you see? Just the land, the empty land, idling, right? Nothing is done with this land, right? Well, of course, if you drive through the uh, some place like Iowa or you know those places, you see a lot of cornfield, right? But in many other places, you just see the uh, the just empty land, idling, right? So there is still huge potential for the uh, agricultural production, right? And then, of course, it has the most uh, advanced technology and science, right? So there is almost nothing that they cannot produce, right? But they're importing a lot of things, starting from oil, right? United States imports a lot of oil from Middle East and uh, South America, like Venezuela, yeah? Uh, why do they do that? Instead of producing oil themselves, right? They're importing a lot of oil, right? Um, yeah. So you think about it, all those you know, other things, right? Um, the idea is this, right? Let's think about this um, two graphs, okay? Uh, the blue line here, what is it? For Tom, The, if he wants to produce apple, what's the maximum amount he can produce in an hour? Um, so, uh, uh, in a day, sorry. With, within 10 hours, right? Yeah. That's the maximum amount of apple. So he could either have 20 pounds of apples and zero cherries, right? Or if he wants to produce uh, cherry, if, if he spends all his time in cherry, right? Then he could produce 20 pounds of cherry and no apple, right? Or he could also have any combination of those two, right? So maybe 18 pounds of apple and two pounds of cherry, or 10 pounds of apple and 10 pounds of cherry, right? 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 What about this uh, uh, Judy's blue line here, right? This blue line for Judy, right? 
Uh, if she spends all day in apple orchard, right, she can pick 30 pounds of apple, right? Or uh, if she uh, just spends all day in cherry field, right, she can pick 60 pounds of cherries. Or she can do any combination in between, right? Like 30 pounds of cherries and 15 pounds of apple. So what do what we call this blue line? Hmm? What? PPF, right? Production Possibilities Frontier, right? PPF is the collection of all possible combination of two goods, right? All possible maximum combination of two goods, right? That could be produced, right? With the given amount of resources and given technology, right? So yes, this is the PPF for Judy currently, and this is PPF for Tom, right? Without trading, if they try to be just self-sufficient, right? But uh, what if they specialize and trade, right? What happens, right? So if uh, Tom specializes, if, if they decide to specialize and trade, what should Tom produce? Apple, why? Yes, Tom has lower opportunity cost, right, compared to Judy, right? So Tom has competitive advantage in Apple, right? And Judy has competitive advantage in cherries, okay? So uh, what happens if they tr specialize and trade? Suppose Tom spends the entire day in apple orchard, okay? so produces 20 pounds of apple, right? Then, uh, well, if he wants, he can consume entire 20 pounds himself, right? If he really loves apple, suppose he hates cherry, he never eats cherry, right? Then, of course, he can choose to uh, consume entire 20 pounds himself, right? Or, in case he hates apple, right? He loves cherry, right? What he can do is uh, just give entire 20 pounds of apple to Judy, right? And then what? What will be the amount of cherry he can receive? Hmm. We didn't talk about this. So, it's the idea of terms of trade, okay? Right now, Tom's opportunity cost is one apple equals one cherry, right? One pound of apples and one, uh, one pound of cherry, right? Judy, it is one uh, apple equals two cherries. Right? In order to produce one pound of apple, he has, she has to give up two pounds of cherry. Right? <coughs> so, uh, in case these two people agree to trade, right? the uh, terms of trade or exchange rate can be somewhere between these two. Right? Like one apple for one and a half cherry. Right? It, de you know, it depends on the, uh, the, uh, the negotiation. They can negotiate, right? And they can agree on any terms of trade. It could be, if, they, if you want, it could be 1A equals 1.7C. That will still work. As long as this is between this and this. Right? This ratio between these two, right? it'll work. Right? But you know, let's make it simple. So let's say they agreed on this um, uh, one apple for one and a half cherry. Right? So what that means is if uh, Tom produces 20 apple and give all 20 apple, 20 pounds of apples to uh, uh, Judy, right? he could receive what? 30 pounds of cher cherries, right? Right? So, um, 
here is the maximum possibility for Tom, right? In case he loves cherries, right? So he gives all 20 pounds of apples to uh, uh, Judy, right? The maximum amount of cherry he could consume is 30 pounds, right? Or any combination in between, right? About half, let's say Tom decided to uh, 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 consume 10 pounds of apple, right? And gave uh, 10 pounds of apple to Judy, right? Then what? He will receive 15 pounds of cherry. Sorry? Because it's one to one and a half, right? Okay. So uh, uh, it will be somewhere, uh, what, 10, it will be 10 pounds of apple and 15 pounds of cherry, somewhere in between. Okay? About Judy, Judy, you know, we can think about the same thing, right? Um, well, after producing 60 pounds of cherries, if she wants, you can, she can, you know, consume all that herself, right? Or she can just provide the, some cherries to, to uh, uh, Tom and give, receive some apple. Or, in the worst case, I mean, she, if she hates cherry, she loves apple, right? Then she can just provide the entire 60 pounds of cherry to Tom and receive what? Maximum of 40 pounds of apples, right? So, according to this, if this was 60, this would be 40, right? Because this is a two-third of, one is two-third of, of 1.5. I think he has an idea. Okay, question. Go ahead. Why, why does the ratio have to be between those two? To be mutually beneficial. To, uh, yeah. If you think about any ratio outside, would that work? I thought you were going to ask a different question. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, think about it, right? Do you have another question here? Can I fix the ratio? Huh? One, one apple and 1.5 cherries just fixed ratio. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that will be their agreement, right? The two countries will uh, negotiate and they will agree on certain exchange rate. What do you mean by fixed? I, w will it ever change? Oh yes, yes, that can change. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, they can make the negotiate, they can make the agreement, say, every month, right? right? Every month they can renegotiate and change the rate. That's fine, right? right. Any other question about this? Well, let me explain a little further, then uh, maybe you'll come up with this question, right? So what's the result of specialization and trade here, right? Uh, according to this, right, um, previously without trade, this blue line was the PPF. The, that's the maximum possibility for Tom, right? But uh, when uh, with the specialization and trade, now this red line, red dotted line, is the PPF. Which is better? Which is better? Why? More of, more total. Yeah, some, uh, some of the uh, outputs, let's say between the red line and uh, a blue line, this, this area, right? Any combination within this area were unattainable previously, right? According to this blue PPF, that's outside the, the PPF, which is unattainable, right? But now, because of the specialization and trade, those combinations are attainable to Tom, right? And make sure you understand, Tom did not work any harder than before. Tom is working exactly at the same rate as before, right? 20 pounds of apple a day. Right? 
but now he, his consumption possibility is greater, right? He can consume more combination of apple and cherries, right? Because he specialized and traded with Judy, right? Judy, the same thing, right? Uh, previously, any combination within this area between the red dotted line and blue line, these were unattainable to Judy, right? But now they are attainable to Judy. Again, Judy did not work any harder than before, right? Judy is still working at the same rate, right? 60 pounds of cherries or 30 pounds of apples per day, right? But just because of uh, specialization and trade, her consumption possibility is larger, is greater, right? So that's the benefit of, of trade, specialization and trade, right? Agree? Any question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> in the, the other section that some student asked, right? Well, uh, if Tom's maximum production of apple is 20 pounds, right? How can Judy pro consume 40 pounds of apple? Okay, so uh, he's saying the Judy's uh, maximum possibility was 30 and 60, okay? So you're saying, okay, just produce 20 here, and uh, which means uh, she can produce, what? 20 cherries. Right, 20 pounds of apples and 20, is that possible? Yeah, okay, and trade with, uh, give 20 cherries to Tom, and uh, you're gonna receive what, about uh, 13? Yeah, two thirds is what? 12, 13 pounds of Apple, right? Which still doesn't make 40 pounds. You understand what I'm asking? Right? Okay. Yeah, the, it's a very simple. The answer is very simple, right? Uh, when we say um, this, you know, Tom can produce 20 apples or 20 cherries, Judy can produce 30 apples or 60 cherries, right? These are per day, per day, right? So in economics, there are two different measurements. Uh, the measurements, some measurements are stock concepts. Some measurements are flow, flow concept, right? Stock concept, measurements are current amount, right? Uh, like, what's your account balance in your bank account? How much money do you have in your current, in your bank account right now, right? That's the stock concept, right? Or how much oil is buried under the Rocky Mountain in the United States. That's the total amount of stock oil right now, right? But a lot of measurements in economics are flow concept. Flow concept means it requires time unit, like per day, per year, per hour, right? It's like uh, your, say, output, right? What is your output? What is your company's output? Well, what that means is, let's say you're producing TV, right? 
if someone asks, what's your output, right? Then say you, 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 let's say, okay, 10,000 TVs. Does it make sense? How many TVs do you produce? If you say 10,000 TVs, does it make sense? That's right. Without time unit, that doesn't make any sense, right? They will ask, what do you mean 10,000? Is that per hour, per day, per month, or per year, right? Without time units, that doesn't make any sense, right? A lot of measurements in economics are flow concept, right? So make sure you understand this, the difference between the stop concept and flow concept. These are flow concepts per day, okay? So if you ask, uh, well, the maximum, I mean, we're talking about specialization and trade, right? Uh, Judy produces only cherries and, you know, trade with uh, uh, Tom, and Tom produces only apple, right? And Tom's maximum production is 20, right? How can Judy consume 40 apples? Well, because these units are flow concept, right? The, uh, we can talk about uh, perhaps, well, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is Tom had already the, the produced apple, the apple picked previously, and uh, he had some apple stored in the warehouse, right? So after start, you know, they start trading, right? Uh, if Judy produced the 60 cherries and provided, uh, you know, Tom, right? And, uh, you know, in case, in case really uh, the, the Judy wants to pro uh, consume 40 apples, right? Then, uh, you know, Tom can provide from the previously picked apples stock, right? From the warehouse, right? Another possibility is there may be another Tom. We're talking about the, the, let's say, think about the world, right? And you're trading with the country, here's the country A, country B, right? And uh, if country B really needs to consume 40 apples and the country A cannot pro pro provide 40 apples, right? Then, of course, you can find another source, right? The, 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 the important thing is uh, these ratios, right? The uh, opportunity based on the opportunity cost, the, uh, you have to understand the concept of comparative advantage, right? And based on that, uh, we have to understand this uh, specializing and trading increases the possibility, increases the maximum possibility for the country's cons consumption. All right? If it doesn't make sense right now, I'll think about it. and. Uh, let me know if it still doesn't make sense. Okay, okay so here, the final conclusion comes like this, right? So here I made some uh, 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 hypothetical number table. Right? So previously, initially, uh, production and consumption without trade. Okay? That was, uh, let's say, each country try to do everything without um, trading, right? Suppose each country wants to become self-sufficient, right? They try to provide everything themselves without trade, right? So in this case, Tom wants to produce uh, both apples and cherries, right? So Tom spends half of the day, half day in apple, half day in cherry, right? And Judy spends half day in apple, half day in cherry, right? then the production will be 10, 10, and 15, 30, okay? Right. In case they decide to specialize, right, then the, uh, Tom will specialize in apple, right? So it will be 20 and 0, right? Judy will specialize in cherry, right? So it will be 0 and 60, right? 
and then after that they can trade okay, at uh, that rate, say one apple to one and a half cherry, right? And uh, as a result of trade, they will have 10 apples and uh, 15 cherries, right? I mean, if you, you know, provide the 10 apples, I mean, yeah. Okay. Pro produce 20 pounds of apples, right? And consume 10 pounds of apple, right? Which means uh, Tom can send the, ten, the rest 10 pounds of apple to Judy and receive 15 pounds of cherries, right? So it will be that possibility, right? So graphically, um, we're talking about this situation, right? Here, initially, we were at this 10, and Tom was at 10 and 10, right? Pro producing 10 pounds of apples and 10 pounds of cherry, right? And uh, Judy was producing 15 pounds of apples and 30 pounds of cherries, right? Uh, in case they specialize and trade, right? Then we, they can be, uh, Tom can be at uh, 10 pounds of apple and 15 pounds of cherries. And Judy can be at, what, 20 pounds of apples and 30 pounds of cherries, right? 20 pounds of apple and 30 pounds of cherry, right? So we're talking about at this point, right? This point and uh, this point, right? Uh, the question is, can we definitely say both are better? Both parties are better than before? Compared to the previous situation, yeah, uh, I guess we can say that uh, compared to, what do you think? Yeah, uh, compared to this red line and the green line, right, the, some people think, you know, when you trade, right, you obviously keep something and receive something, right? And uh, you know, it will depend on the price, domestic price, right? And each country may have different price, you know, price of apple and price cherry, right? So it will depend on the amount of, I mean, the, 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 the price of apple and price of cherry, right? So if you, you know, I'm trying to explain, right? Regardless of the prices of these items, right? Both countries, both parties can benefit by specializing and trading, right? So if you compare it this way, well, compared to this situation, uh, the um, Tom is con consuming same amount of apple, but the, uh, his consumption of cherry is larger than before, right? Judy's case, uh, she is consuming exactly the same amount of cherries as before, right? But uh, she is consuming more apples than before, right? So you can say, you know, by just looking at this green line, uh, the situation is better than before, right? Again, the, the key concept here is neither uh, Tom nor Judy has worked any harder than before. They're working exactly at the same rate as before, right? But just the consumption possibility improves, right? Because of the uh, spe specialization and trade, right? Um, the last question here, the, this, this red line is asking, um, well, can, can we have improvement in everything, right? In green line here, the, uh, we have improvement in cherry, but uh, the, the situation with apple did not improve, right? Here for Judy, Situation with uh, apple improved, but uh, the amount of consumption in cherry did not improve, right? So can we have improvement in everything as a result of specialization and trade? Yes, right? Uh, going back to the graph here, okay? 
perhaps, I mean, this uh, red dotted lines are now PPF, right, for Tom and PPF for Judy, right? So we can probably pick one point, uh, any combination, one specific combination on this uh, new PPF, which will show improvement in everything, right? For example, here, 12A and 12C. Make sure you, this calculation works, right? According to this production and this exchange rate or terms of trade, right? Uh, Tom can end up with 12 pounds of apple and 12 pounds of cherry. What that? Tom is producing apple, right? So in order to have 12 pounds of apple, he is working six hours in apple. Or, oh, okay. Sorry. So the maximum he produced uh, in apple is tw 20 pounds, right? So if he keeps 12 pounds of apple, he's sending eight pounds of apple to Judy. Then the, how many pounds of cherries will he receive? 12 pounds of cherries, right? So it works, right? How about Judy, right? She's, she's keeping 36 pounds of cherries. So she's sending 24 pounds of cherry to Tom, right? And for 24 pounds of cherry, he, she will receive, what? 16 pounds of apple, right? So these numbers are right, right? These numbers work, right? So if you do that, then if you compare these numbers to the original numbers, then you will see this gain or improvement in everything, right? In apple and cherry, right? So again, that's just in the hypothetical illustration of the, 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 what kind of gain you can uh, achieve through specialization and trade. Okay, so this is the uh, the theoretical uh, 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 the support for the international trade. Okay, why even the country like the United States uh, will benefit right, by trading with other country? You know, because there will be as long as there is difference in opportunity cost. If two countries have equal opportunity cost in something, then trade will not occur because neither country will have comparative advantage. Do you understand? Okay. If uh, it was 20, 20, and 40, 40, suppose, right? the uh, Judy's maximum production would be was 40 pounds of apples and 40 pounds of cherry, right? Then opportunity cost of apple and cherry will be the same between Tom and Judy, right? And they will not be able to find terms of trade, right? They will find any, they will not be able to find any uh, mutually beneficial uh, terms of trade, right? So the trade will not occur, right? But as long as the, uh, there is difference in opportunity cost, right? Then the trade can be beneficial. Okay. Right. All right. So just uh, review this idea and continue your practice with the mic on lab, and uh, uh, we'll get to the next chapter on Thursday. All right. All right. I'll see you on Thursday.